Okay, next up we have part one for our city council debate. And can I have Mr. Reeser and Mr. Chansey please take your place up on center stage. Uh, putting this together, this is fantastic that uh, guidance putting uh, our best foot forward and uh, coming together to hear the issues um, from the word of, um, straight from the word of uh, the candidates. Uh, my name is Marshall Reeser. I'm an incumbent for uh, Post 1. I am what I would call the positive and productive choice for, for the Post. I'm a CPA. And my wife and I own a CPA practice here in town. Um, we have three boys, all are alum of Guyton Elementary School, which was an excellent education and experience for our family. I'm active in my church, I'm active in the community, I serve on various uh, boards, um, nonprofit boards, and I'm proud of the accomplishments that we've, um, we've accomplished in the, in the first, in the past four years, as you'll see a lot um, on the back of the blue sheet there. Uh, I love living in Guyton. I love the quality of life. I chose to move back here uh, after living in uh, Atlanta and Charlotte for this specific purpose of raising my family. It is a wonderful place, and I think sometimes we overlook just the um, the opportunity that we have and, and the neighbors and the, and the quality of life that we have here in the city. I, uh, I look forward to continue to serve this community and uh, really want to, um, to do it in a way that's smart growth. Um, growth is coming, and I just want to make sure that we do it the right way. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeremiah Chansey. I want to thank all the people that worked hard to put this together. But I really want to thank everybody that showed up, because you are what make, makes democracy work. It's all about the people. It's not about the people that come up here and stand on the stage and answer the questions. It's about you and your everyday lives, because local government has the biggest impact on your everyday life. It's not who sits in the White House, it's who sits at City Hall. I think this is a great opportunity for you guys to get out and meet the candidates. I'm not a well-known figure. I didn't grow up here. I don't have the right last name. I don't have a lot of money. Um, we moved here about seven years ago because we wanted that small town feel. I grew up in a small town, and that's kind of the environment that I wanted for my kids. I wanted them to be in a good school system, so we moved here. I work full-time as a firefighter in Savannah. I also coach recreational basketball for the um, rec department, county rec department, and the local Effingham Bulldog travel basketball team. All of my spare time, for the most part, is taken up by my kids and their activities. I just want to, you know, I think the, the direction we're heading in is not the way that we need to be heading. Four years ago, I voted for my opponent. Right after the election, we sat down and had a good conversation, and I just think that the decisions that they've made are counterproductive to where we need to be and where we need to go. How can Guyton grow but still be able to maintain its hometown feel and be able to protect its historic buildings and beautiful agriculture? The city is in the process of actually finishing, uh, thanks to our uh, city manager, McKee Brown, uh, our master plan. Uh, the master plan will allow us to make decisions based on what the citizens have um, said is important to them. So we are, we're wrapping that up right now. That will allow us to grow in a smart way. Growth is coming. We just want to make sure that we provide opportunities for our citizens uh, to live, work, and play here. There's not a lot of opportunities to stay in, in town. I think there's an opportunity to, to encourage the right development, the right uh, I love the idea of the flex space where people like Lancaster has the ability to attract folks who can do the types of work that they're good at, but also make a decent living doing those without having to drive into pool. So I think there's a wonderful opportunity for Guyton. We're closer to the Hyundai plant than any other municipality. Uh, it's, it's just across the river, and there, it's coming our way. So we just need to be proactive. We need to make sure that we 
make smart choices, and I think we have created a wonderful foundation in these four years that we've been in office to, uh, to create st stable government. We have an IGA that's expanding. We have uh, the YMCA that's going on. We have a lot of things that are going on that might not be going on if you have an unstable government. Our government is stable, and if you continue and allow us to stay in office, that stability will stay in place. If you introduce folks who don't necessarily have a solid platform, you're not really sure what you're getting. You know what you're getting with us. We have done things. I, I would ask my opponent, what is it that you would have us do that we haven't done? I think growth is good. But before you can have growth, you have to fix the infrastructure problems that we have. Until you fix the wastewater capacity issues and the stormwater runoff flooding issues, no growth is going to be possible. We have a great opportunity in the next five to ten years with the buildings, the commercial buildings that are going up on 17, the vacant buildings with the creation of the DDA. I think the DDA will be an integral resource in helping the city grow. But you can't just make it up as you go and approve here and there. You have to have a plan and an idea of where you want to go. That's, what the, that's why zoning and planning is so important. So we do have a plan, and that's what I mentioned when I first came up here. We have a plan. We're not just doing it willy-nilly. We're, we're, we're doing what is good for the city, and that is following the plan. I served on planning and zoning for many years, and we would have folks come before us, and we would just make decisions. There was no guidance. There wasn't a true plan. We have that plan. Tremendous efforts, and the solutions are many, and we're moving in the right direction. All right, Mr. Chancy. So speaking of growth, let's talk about the city budget. Do you think it's a success or a failure and why? Oh, the city budget is an epic failure. They have been over budget every year. If you read the audit on page 38, the 2022 fiscal year end budget shows that there were $171,000 over budget, which is a violation of section 6.26 of the city charter. They went from a $15,000 surplus when they took office to, in two years, a $171,000 deficit. The police department in the first year of Chief Bolletic was $313,000 over budget. Since that time, it's been $75,000 over budget and $40,000 over budget. EOM, the EOM contract has gone up to almost $500,000 a year, and streets and sanitation are both over budget every single year. Taxes, while the millage rate has gone down, the tax rate that you as a homeowner pay has gone up every single year of this administration. The first year it went up 3%, the second year it went up 5%. It went up 11% last year and it went up 2% this year, which means you're paying more and they're spending more and yet they still can't balance the budget. That all sounds great, but it's incorrect. Our, our fund balance has gone up every year that we've been part of it. We did have a deep, we had a negative $170,000, but that was in the general fund. If you compare that to other funds that we have, we have a water fund. I think that same year we made over $200,000. So that sounds great, and you know that people clap because it sounds good, but think about this. Our budget is over, is $2 million. Most folks, I think the median income is $70,000. You have to put that in perspective. Do the percentage, figure out what it is in your household, and you'll understand the number. Yes, the budget is $2.1 million now, but it was $1.1 million when they took over. He talks about the $250,000 that they had to transfer out of the water and sewer fund to balance the budget. Wouldn't that be better used to fix the wastewater treatment problems that we have? I'm going to ask you to stay up there for your next question. Okay. The, um, the funds are increasing. So when you have a budget one year, you have a number, that doesn't come from all property taxes. Our budget is approximately 10% of our revenues comes from your property taxes. Okay. A lot of the revenues come from things like lost and uh, other taxes that the city receives. And that's the that's the reason that we need to grow so our population continues to grow okay. so that we don't have to tax our citizens. It is a revenue stream and that is why the budget continues to increase. Mr. Edgar, please for your next question. Yes, 
So, speaking of money, let's talk about the Keys Plus funds, which we're, you know, slightly touched upon in the mayoral debate. Some residents have called this a tax burden that's being placed on them. Do you believe the developers should share in these costs through implementing impact fees? Sorry, T-SPOS is up there. Yes, sir. Yeah, T-SPOS is a wonderful opportunity for all consumers to bear the, the uh, burden of, of our roads. If we don't have a T-SPLOS, then those who own property will have a higher property tax. Okay, that is not just, that is not guidance who's imposing that tax necessarily. That is, that is the county because it's a necessary. We have to have good roads. And to do that, you can either pass along all to your property tax owners, or you can allow a one cent uh, tax T-SPLOS that the, the businesses actually participate in. So you are in some ways allowing the businesses to share that burden. If you don't have a T-SPLOS, the businesses won't be participating in that way. A lot of times the businesses that are large get these tax incentives and they're not paying any property taxes. So the T-SPLOS shares the burden across all consumers, not just property tax owners. Did I answer the full question or was there more? It's up to you. That's the question now. So I support T's Plus, and I think it's a good thing for our city. We we have we have worked with the cities of Springfield and the county, and we've made, as you've seen around town, as Springfield's done, we've made drastic improvements to our roads. Uh, that's good. We want to continue to do that. I'm excited that we might, if we can get the next one passed, we can start expanding our bike trail so it will go all the way from Guyton down to Panora. That is a boom. If you've been to other places where they have like Athens or Greenville and they have these bike trails, it is a wonderful opportunity. It helps the small town businesses thrive and to be able to be an attraction for our community. People love our trail. So uh, I think these Plus is a wonderful opportunity for us to continue to, uh, to be the place people want to be. I am sick and tired of sitting in traffic and watching 18 wheelers destroy our road while they expect us, the taxpayers, to fund and fix it. We need impact fees in this county so that the warehouses are the ones paying for the roads that are destroying. In the city T-SPLOS, it lists $600,000 as other resurfacing projects. They can't even tell you what they want to spend it on. I'll tell you what I want to spend it on. I want to take that $600,000 and spend it to fix some of these stormwater issues because you can use that money from T-SPLOS to fix road stormwater runoff. All right, Mr. Chancellor, I'm going to ask you to step forward for your next question. So we talked about this in the master thing a little bit tonight, a little bit in this debate, a little bit in the May old debate. What is your opinion on adding more high-density housing in rental units, and how does it fit into this master plan for guidance? Until we fix the wastewater treatment issue, high-density housing is just not possible at this current time. We have the, the development that's on the agenda tomorrow night for 120 acres, which is probably be between 150 and 200 homes, which they can't even at request to connect to the sewer because we don't have the wastewater treatment capacity. At the end of next year, wastewater treatment capacity is cut by 60%. That means the 90% that we're using right now every month goes to 200%. We have to fix that before we can continue to grow and fix the housing issues that we have. Yes, there is a housing issue in this state. People need affordable housing. And the only way we're gonna get there is to fix the infrastructure first so that we can allow for that affordable housing to come in because nobody wants to build affordable housing if you don't have the infrastructure such as water and sewer to support it. Density housing should be built closer into the city that would encourage people to walk and do things that make sense for dense housing. The development that my opponent is talking about does not want sewer. They are going to build this development and they'll become a water, hopefully, seems like, will become a water customer revenue source for the city and, and, a, and a population boom that will help us in other ways. They, they won't tap into our, our sewer. Uh, we are making progress on that. We're expanding. We're very near to our expansion deal. We're talking to other uh, city and county about the possibility of working Hi. together and creating an authority. So this housing definitely has a place for a guy. All right, if there are no problems, Mr. Rice, step back up. All right, roundabouts. Pick one answer. Love. 
love them or stop building them? Uh, easy, easy. Um, roundabouts make sense. It's, it's kind of a good thing for the city. It's everywhere you go. It's a, no left turns. Uh, it saves a lot of accidents. Um, my office used to be right downtown before we had the roundabout, and um, traffic was a terrible thing. Um, once the roundabout came, you didn't even know school was out. So roundabouts are great. And I uh, think they're. We should have more. I don't have an issue with roundabouts. Please learn how to drive in them. Some people, you don't have to stop. It's just a yield. That's it. Don't accelerate. All right, gentlemen. Um, this will be the final question. You each will get two minutes to respond, just like our mayoral candidates did. So, um, Mr. Chancey, we'll start with you. What do you love most about Guyton? And what is one thing you would like to change? I think the thing I love most is the small town feel. Like I said, we moved here because we were looking for a good school system. We lived in Richmond Hill. We didn't want to live in Savannah. The school was very terrible. We wanted to we wanted to live somewhere that didn't have the hustle and bustle, like Cooler, Richmond Hill, or now we're in kind of, you know, where you're sitting in traffic all day long. I think we only have to sit in traffic once every third day when I go to work. But my wife has to sit in it every day when she goes to work, and all of you sit in it every day when you go to work. I love the small town feel. I love the mom and pop shops. That's what that's what makes a community. When everybody knows everybody, when you you know you have that, that community feeling. I think that's the best thing about Guyton. I think that's the that's the persona of Guyton that we need to keep and focus on. One thing that I would change, I think the biggest like I said, we've talked a lot about infrastructure. I think something that drastically needs to change is the police department. As I said earlier, it's been over budget every year. Chief has really terrible hiring practices. He hired an officer who resigned the day before because he admitted to drinking and driving a patrol car in Rincon. He hired an SRO who completely fabricated his employment history on his application. He's been over budget every year. He, it took him three years to develop a set of SOPs for policies and procedures and he just copied those from Valdosta and didn't even change all of the city of Valdosta terms in, the, in them. He shows up on scene, he doesn't have a vest, he doesn't have a weapon. 30 seconds. I think the PD needs to change. The PD can be such a great resource for this community, but it needs to have that community interaction and community involvement. The people need to be involved in the process, just like they need to be involved with council. It's, it's your government. You have to live with it. You should be involved in that process and you should have a say for it. Question, what do you love most about Guyton and what is one thing you would change? What I love most about Guyton is my wife's great uncle used to call it a garden spot because it was a place that people could come together and you would share your uh, bounty, your vegetables or your, you know, whatever it is you had to share with one another. And, and that's the great thing about Guyton that you can't get in other places. So it is a wonderful place to raise a family like I mentioned earlier. We chose to move here so that we could raise our family where you can walk to Max and get crickets, or you can meet somebody at church that will help you in, in ways that you probably wouldn't have a support system if you lived in other big cities. So I think Guyton is, is, is a special place, and that is why I'm passionate about keeping, um, keeping it, the quality of life protected so that we don't have folks that are just moving here and sort of instituting their will on us. We want to make sure that what we have and what makes guidance special, that we preserve it and that we protect it and that our kids will want to come back. Honestly, when I was a kid growing up here and the population was very small, I didn't want to come back. Now things are different and I think it's a great place to live and it's a great place to make a career. Um, what would I change? Was that the other balance? I, re I really wouldn't change much. I think my opponent mentioned the police department, and, and when I was canvassing or, or talking to people, I, I talked to a lady and I said, what would you change? And she said, nothing really. And then she said, well, what about the police department? I said, well, what specifically about the police department? She said, nothing, I, nothing I want to get into now. What, what that told me is that she's probably reading things and she's believing what she's reading without really having a, a true conversation. Our police department's doing a great job the budget increases because we have to pay people. And it doesn't help when people troll our police officers on 15. Facebook. We need to support these folks that put their life on the line for us every day for a salary that is not significantly 
uh, higher than what it should be. volunteers here. My name is Rosalind Lowe, and as a lifelong resident of this wonderful community, I have had the privilege of watching our city evolve and grow. And I believe that we are on the right track to seeing guidance become more stable for future generations. I've had the privilege of serving as an educator with the Effingham County Board of Education. My career as a teacher allowed me to connect with our community on a profound level. Understanding our families' hopes and dreams and importance of quality of education. During my four years on the city council, I have witnessed and participated in transformative changes that have shaped our beloved guidance. We have made significant progress in strengthening our police department, infrastructure improvements, and fiscal responsibility. We have many more opportunities and challenges, and I am committed to smart growth, t loss continuation, downtown beautification, recreation facilities, infrastructure investments. I am not only concerned about, or, but driven and committed to our community's well-being, but so deeply committed to listening to your voices. I urge all citizens to attend our meeting visit, um, voice your opinions, and be part of this collective journey. Together as a team, we can overcome challenges, seize opportunities, and continue to flourish as a community. Thank you for your support, and I look forward to working with you as we shape the future of Guiding Together. Our strength lies in our unity, and together we will achieve more. Let's continue to build a guidance that will be wonderful in our eyes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Theodore Hamby. I'm running for Post 2. Uh, I would like to thank uh, FAM News and Views for putting this on. Um, and now FAM Grassroots. I'd like to thank Liberty Christian Church for giving us this venue. I'd like to thank uh, WSAD Kev, uh, Kaylee Fetka for moderating this debate. I'd also like to um, just to speak on uh, Israel for a moment. You know, they're going through a hard time right now. Um, I know I'm a supporter of Israel, as probably many of you, and uh, so if you have them in your prayers. Uh, I'm running on a five-point plan. I believe that five-point plan, uh, you can feel free to ask me about it later, or we can probably answer it uh, through, through these questions. But I believe that that five-point plan can ensure the guidance creator's days are still ahead. Um, and right now I'm also fighting because I believe mobile homes are under attack right now in guidance. You know, because we have a council that wants to cease to exist mobile homes in guidance. This moratorium is pretty much wanting to kick out. If you have an existing mobile home right now in guidance, they're wanting to say, all right, you have a mobile home, it catches on fire, you're gone. So they've set up a system to eliminate mobile homes, which is unfair. They are going to essentially kick out seniors, young people, or middle-aged Americans. If you can't afford a mobile home, then they're essentially giving you, saying, guidance is no longer your home. So I'm fighting for those people 
who live in mobile homes. I'm fighting for the citizens of Guyton because I believe that Guyton is my home. I've lived here for three years. My family, the only people I have with me right now is my mom and my dad. They're sitting right there. My dad's family has lived here since the 1960s, so I'm not a transplant. I'm fighting for the residents of Guyton because I believe that together, through this five-point plan, we can ensure that Guyton's greatest days are still ahead of us because right now, this administration is taking us backwards and I will take us forwards. I'm Theodore Hamby, and that's all I have to say. Uh, so I'm under my minute. Can I have a refund on that? <laughs> all right. Thank you. Well, then that would allow me to say what type of businesses I would like to see in Guyton. And the type of businesses I would like to see would be maybe something where I can drive uptown or walk uptown, get my nails done. I would like to see where I can get my hair done. Also, maybe get my oil changed. Those are the type of businesses I would like to see and the workforce I would like to see in that area. Um, also, um, it has, would you repeat it again? Sure, what type of employment opportunities would you like to see be brought to Okay, I would also like to see child care, which the YMCA will be bringing a lot of this um, in workforce in the area as well. The um, child care, just like for the school, is for the elementary school at Guyton. So therefore, we will have children walking across. We need teachers. We need um, not only teachers, but also some volunteers, so teachers who want to volunteer. But the workforce will consist of nail techs, um, small business owners, people who work in the food industry, people who work in the um, doctors, um, all, um, what you call them, the mechanics. 30 seconds. Okay, and that's about it. Yeah. With that child care, when I looked over that contract, um, with the why, it did not say anything about whether a citizens, us citizens of Guyton, would receive any certain special discount. If we're footing a 750,000 tax bill, we should receive a special discount, Hi. which is totally unfair. has been told, but we do not owe $750,000 on that property. The property is paid for. We are not paying a bill. So I'm not understanding Mr. Handy's disheartening of the YMCA. We all have to and especially, I know I would have to pay. I have a grandchild that needs child care. So I would have to pay my share. We all have to pay our share. Time. The difference between the citizens of Guyton and elected officials in Guyton is when they make these decisions, they go behind closed doors and make these decisions. And we don't know what goes on behind these closed doors. So we don't know what is said and what's not said. So we're left in the dark until it's actually done. So on Wednesday, we're, there's this big unveiling and we might have some closure of what's actually going on. That's my problem. Ms. Bullock, your next question, please. So this is a growing sentiment in the greater Savannah designated market area, but especially here in Guyton. So how can Guyton grow, quite a theme of the evening, but yet still be able to keep its 
green space and wildlife and wetlands? First of all, we need to um, consult with others who are in this area where this is their profession. We consult with Community services, healthcare, or outreach programs would you like to see added to Guyton? Could you repeat that? Sure. What types of community services, healthcare, or outreach programs would you like to see added to Guyton? Well, I think Tiller Drugstore is uh, outstanding uh, for healthcare. Uh, so I think that you know just having them in the community is is, is a great start. Uh, so yeah, Tiller Drugstore. Uh, there you go. I'd like a refund on that question too. Thank you, um, community service and outreach programs. I would like to see us depend on work on mental health. Mental health has been such a topic and has been has affected so many people in this building and so I feel like we need to focus on the mental health aspect we have um, uh, two I was I'm trying to remember what they name is. okay I'll be two yes <laughs> all right Ms. Blum if you can stay up there for oh. a question please thank you ma'am let's talk about school traffic cameras you know there's Many people in that community who say they've been incorrectly ticketed, and this is not a problem exclusive to Guyton. Um, is that possible? And if so, how do we maintain safety yet prevent drivers from getting incorrect fines? School traffic cameras. That has been a bad topic in our area because nobody wanted really, too many people said they did not want those cameras. But I felt that the cameras were essential to um, navigate through the school day for the children. It provides safety. It provides a way for the children not, you know, things, accidents not to happen. Not only for the students, but also for our officers. Officers do not have to leave. And if you run the traffic, you're doing 35 miles an hour or more, we're actually 40, 45, and they will not have to leave to run you down, and which may cause another accident. So the school traffic cameras prevent a lot of accidents in that area. Now, some people say that they've been ticketed wrong. Have you gone and talked to someone about being ticketed? Some, some others, some other people have said, okay, I was speeding, so I, I take that. So maybe sometimes we have to take responsibility for the things that we do in life and say, I did this and I take responsibility for it. If you didn't do it, then you go to the right authorities to determine what can be done. 30 seconds. So the cameras, have been a wonderful thing in our area, not just in guiding, but also in the Rankin community, the, um, the Rankin Elementary School, they just put the, the last ones there, and also in Springfield. So let's embrace it and know that we need to slow down. Time. It's coming through a school system, we need to slow down. How long do I have on this question? 30 seconds. How long? 30 seconds. This is a rebuttal. Oh, this is, uh, can I get the same question? No. Okay. Well, I believe they're unconstitutional. Uh, you know, you know, first they're a Fourth Amendment violation. And so, if you, if they, they were put in because they were for the safety of the kids, which is, that's not the case because if you have a cop out there directing traffic, what's the point of having a camera out there? And a guy PD is a 24/7 department. So if, if 
what Councilwoman Palouse said, if the cop had to go out there and chase a car, then he could radio in another cop car and say, hey look, I'm chasing a car, can you come out here and direct traffic? Problem solved. So, yeah, they're completely unconstitutional. We don't need them. They're just a money grab. So, yeah. Tacky. Was my mic cut off? Okay. No. Yeah, un unconstitutional. I would try to get away with it. All right, Ms. Chambie, I'll have you step back up for your question. Thank you. 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 Oh, there, you know, there's so many, so let's, let's try to chat with small I mean, I'd I like to go back to the mobile home issue. So back with the mobile home issue back in last year, it was, they brought it back to the city manager, and instead of going to the proper channels of the planner and zoning, the city manager just kind of implemented it, and it created this big stir, and now it's going to the planner and zoning. You know, if you own the property, you should be able to do what you want with it. And so, if you own the property and you want to put a mobile home there, you should be allowed to. But instead, we have this giant cluster big problem to where now it seems like city council doesn't want mobile homes in Guyton. Well, you know, that's just, you know, it, it's either you're against mobile homes or you're against poor people. So, what's the problem? You know, if, you know I grew up in a mobile home. It, so either you're against seniors, you're against people who can't afford stick-built houses, or you just want Guyton to look more like a community that is just regular homes. So that's the biggest problem that I have right now, is that you have a city council that is completely, totally against mobile homes. And so yeah, that's my biggest problem right now. Apparently, Mr. Hamby does not know the term, what it means, moratorium. Moratorium means a moment to pause, to think. A moment to just think about what you need to do. And that's exactly what we did. We paused for a moment to decide what we need to do about the mobile homes. Only because we had a complaint that the mobile home came on Church Street across the street and it was a historical site. Time. Uh, so my opponent, she was against mobile homes, and then Mr. Garvin pressed her. Then she was for mobile homes, and then at a planner and zoning meeting, she was for stick-built homes. So it's either you're for or you're against it. Which is it? So, I mean, you're flip-flopping so much on the issues, nobody knows where you're, where you're on. So it's like, I mean, you're acting like John Kerry in 20, 20, 2004. You're sailing with the wind on the issue. So, where, where are you at? Time. I haven't flip-flopped. No, I haven't. I did not flip-flop. I had to think about what we needed to do, and that's exactly what we did. I'm not against poor people. I lived in a mobile home. So that's the thing. You don't know anything about your candidate. You need to understand where your candidate came from. And I wouldn't dare put anyone out. And two, Mobile homes, um, they are good mobile homes, and they are good stick-built homes. So that's not a problem. And it's time. I would do anything to help anyone. Running short on time here. So um, this portion will be the same for um, the mayoral and the first council debate. Um, I'll pose one question to you. You each get two minutes to respond. There will be no rebuttal. It will be the same question. So, Mr. Hamlin, we will start with you. Okay. Who needs help in this community the most, and how would a vote for you help them? 
obviously it's the people living in the mobile homes because they have no idea where their candidates, their their uh, councilwoman stands. I mean, one minute she's for or she's against them, then she's for them, and then they're planning a zoning meeting. She's like, well, if we could all just build stick built homes, we'd all be okay. So I think these are the people that need the most help because a moratorium. I mean, I do know what a moratorium is. I went to the University of Georgia, so did the mayor. So I think we have a pretty good, we, we're pretty smart people. I mean, he does not have a lead, but I think we're pretty smart people. But, um, you know, I do know what a moratorium is, but uh, the people that need the most help are the people that live in a uh, in the mobile homes. Because you go to the planning and zoning board, and then somebody got denied who fit all the qualifications but uh, because he was grandfathered in and didn't work, because the planning and zoning doesn't know what they're doing. I mean, they listen to whoever can get in their ear. So these are the people that need the most help. Uh, you know, it's seniors, it's young people, it's middle-aged people who can't afford to buy a stick-built house. Mobile homes, you know, are affordable and they're 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 and they look much nicer than the houses being built right now. So these are the people that need the most help. Thank you, sir. All right, Ms. Pellote, who needs help in this community the most, and how would a vote for you help them? Well, when I walk around or ride around in my community, I see a lot of homes that have tarps on them, on their roofs. And I feel like those are the people that need help. Some of them are elderly people, some of them are middle-aged, but they need that help. And I feel that if I'm in office, I will get out there and write CBDG grants, walk, do the work, go to the um, homeowner or the person who is in charge of the home and see about getting that information so I can help fix their rooms so I can help fix their inside of their homes. So we can do some work around their homes where it has been built up with um, vegetation. I feel like that's what we need to be doing. A beautification of our, um, One minute. beautification of our guidance, our community. That's what we need to do. Okay, this concludes the debate portion of tonight. And I just want to thank Kaylee Fedko for coming in from WSAV. Wonderful job. I think we had a very productive evening. Now we're going to move on to the